Hello everybody, my name is Samuel Higgs. I am the sports editor for the Alexander City Outlook and I am here at Wind Creek State Park for day three of the St. Croix 2024 Bassmaster Open here at Lake Martin. Um, so I will be joined by a guest, Mr. Hank Weldon of Bass in a little bit. But before we get into that, I uh, just want to say thank you to our sponsor, Extreme Power Sports in Opelika, uh, for sponsoring this live stream here at Wind Creek State Park. Uh, if you need anything, motorcycles, dirt bikes, scooters, slingshots, ATVs, uh, extreme, extreme Power Sports will be able to help you out. Again, they're located in Opelika. Um, but before, before I am joined by Mr. Weldon, uh, just kind of want to go through exactly what's gone down, you know, over the over the course of the past two days. Currently, at the moment, Will Davis Jr. is sitting in the lead with a total weight of 24 pounds and nine ounces through two days. On day one, he put himself pretty firmly in the lead, catching five fish for a total of 13 pounds, and then the second day caught another five pit fish for 11 pounds and nine ounces. But one guy that was able to pretty much he you know I don't believe he wasn't in the top 10 whenever you know day one completed and we're talking about Josh Butler I probably should have said his name first but Josh Butler has risen up to the second spot overall on day one he caught five fish and was unable to get into the double digit mark he finished he finished day one with nine pounds seven ounces but on the second day I think had the best day out of anybody anybody on the lake so far he caught a whopping 14 pounds and five ounces which jumped him all the way up to the second spot um, some of the other fishers that we got in the top 10 are going to be bobby bakewell he has 10 fish caught for a total of 22 pounds three ounces byron kennedy jr also with 10 fish 22 pounds and two ounces paul marks ha has 22 pounds through two days cody meyer has 21 pounds and 14 ounces he is tied with yui akai Aokai, I'm sorry if I butchered that name, um, but they are tied right now with 21-14. And then we got Kyle Palmer coming in at 8th, uh, Dakota Ebear coming in at ninth, and then at 10, we got Brady Vernon. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody understands the significance of Bassmaster Open coming coming to Lake Martin, especially after, you know, what transpired at um, Lake Hartwell in South Carolina. Obviously, they uh, suffered some pretty significant damage um, from flooding, thanks to Hurricane Helene, um, which basically sent, you know, Bassmaster into a, a bit of a predicament where they had to to quickly get things going because uh, I mean this is this is an extremely important tournament and I'm pretty sure whenever I get uh, Mr. Weldon to to join us uh, he he is going to uh, I explain that significance a little bit more but you know this this is a really big tournament this is this is such a huge tournament this isn't something that they could just cancel it's not something that they could just delay because you know fishermen there's anglers future on the line whenever it comes to you know the the significance of this tournament um so it, it's just it's it's a really big tournament and you know we're seeing guys you know put up some really impressive days on the first day um you know only three anglers were able to cross that 12 pound mark but the rest of the people that were within the top 20 were able to get into the double digits um but for the most part you know the the thing that i have learned um especially after being here on day one is that you know this is this is going to be a game of ounces and that's the thing that i think um, you really need to understand as far as, you know, what's at stake here. You know, there's obviously similarities and differences between Lake Martin and uh, Lake Hartwell. But, I mean, one of the things that you have to consider is the difference in, you know, the tactics and everything like that. I mean, you, you have to think that, I mean, these anglers have spent their time, you know, studying Lake Hartwell. They were checking depths. They were checking where the fish were, were, were going to be most populated. And you also got to consider all the weather factors that go into it. But I mean, to think that, you know, this was a tournament that was originally supposed to be held at another lake, you know, in a week they find a new location and all these fisher fishermen have to completely throw out all the studying that they had done beforehand um, and, and just 
kind of start from scratch and kind of figure out what they need to do to be successful out here on the lake. And, and that was, a, again, you know, whenever I was out here on day one, I was able to, to watch a little bit of the weigh-ins. And, you know, they, they talk, to the, talk to the anglers after they, you know, get their weights and, and everything of the nature. And you couldn't help but see, you know, a couple different reactions as far as the weigh-ins go. You know, some fishermen were like, I was able to catch a whole lot, but I wasn't able to get that big one. Then there were other guys that, you know, struggled to get some fish on the line. You know, it, it's it's definitely, you, you have to think like that first day had to have been, you know, just such a, such an interesting experience for a majority of the anglers out there. And I can see that obviously in day two, a lot of them had better days. I mean, heck, we had a 14 pound day from Josh Butler. So, I mean, these guys were able to adjust on the fly and figure out what was necessary to ultimately come out on top and, you know, put up some better numbers. Um, but I think I'm about to be joined by Mr. Weldon in a second, but again, oh, here we are. The, the man of the hour. We're, we're live. So we, I was about to say, we're, we're ready for you. So Basically, what I was just talking about is, um, you know, so I was here for day one of, of the Bassmaster Open, and one of the things that I, I've, I already told you this, I'm not a fisherman. It's one thing that, you know, I, I'm getting used to ever since I started started right. living in Alabama, but um, one of the things that I found very interesting, and you guys also did an article about it on the Bassmaster website, where this is a game of ounces. Oh, uh, absolutely. And so, I mean... I, I, I was just talking to to the to the live stream. It's just like you had all this preparation for Lake Hartwell, and you had to flip to Lake Martin. I guess kind of tell me because you you know better than I do mm -hmm. as far as the differences between the two right. and, and what you've seen from some of the fishermen right. as far as the adjustment go. Some of the well, one of the main differences is Lake Hartwell has the blueback herring. I mean, they're in Lake Martin too, but um, the blueback herring is a little more established, which mm -hmm. is a uh, a very uh, high protein bait fish for mm -hmm. the uh, fish. Uh, the fish are a little bit bigger on Hartwell, but as far as numbers of catch and frequencies of catching, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like, you know, how the lake looks, very similar, mm -hmm. water clarity, all that. Hartwell's a little bit bigger. Uh, Martin is uh, 44,000 acres, and I think Hartwell's around 65,000 mm -hmm. acres, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. So a little bit bigger, but as, as, as far as similarities with how they fish a number of fish they're very close to mm. being compared to each other absolutely yeah yep. i gotcha and so i mean i'm just looking at some of the totals from mm. you know day one compared to day two and right. you know day one you know three fishermen were able to get over uh 12 pounds and then a majority right. of the top 20 they were able to get into double digits but i'm looking at all the numbers from from day two i mean we have josh butler who came in with 14, yep. 14 biggest bag of the tournament that's, that's what, right that's what i'm that's saying right. and so like you're seeing a lot of these uh, uh, anglers, you know, able to get up these numbers. What did right. you see as far as, you know, the adjustments that they were able to make from day one to yeah. day two? So that's kind of usual with these guys. They're so good. They, mm -hmm. they, they learn something every day they're mm -hmm. out there. I mean, you can see it on live today. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a lot of times, used to old school, you mm -hmm. always saw weights kind of drop mm -hmm. on the second day and third day. Mm -hmm. But these new guys, and with the technology and equipment they have, they usually gain weight as it's going along. Mm -hmm. As you can see, you know, we had the mm -hmm. largest bag caught on day two, and we'll see if that gets beat today. Oh, absolutely. And so I guess uh, w one of the things that, you know, I find very interesting about the tournament is just the the high stakes that are involved mm -hmm. in yeah. this tournament. And I don't know if many of the, the people that know the tournaments going on understand how high of stakes are, right. at, you know, right. at play. So I wonder if you could explain to me and explain to absolutely you so, know, what's at stake. Especially this one. This is number nine, the mm -hmm. final event of a nine event season. Um, anglers are vying for elite series bursts, um, which we were able to lock all those in yesterday, but it is a season long, uh, race. And I mean, just to give you kind of perspective, we started out first week of February in Southern Florida in, uh, Clewiston, Florida on the shores mm -hmm. of Lake Okeechobee. We've been all the way to upstate Minnesota mm -hmm. and, you know, in various spots between there, um, Michigan, Wisconsin, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Arkansas, I'm trying to think if I missed any there, and then uh, and then uh, Alabama twice, uh, yeah. and uh, and you know it's it's uh, it's a it's a long, grueling run, and uh, for these guys, 
um, this is the end of the road. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, there's nine very happy people yesterday. <laughs> um, and uh, maybe a, a few more, you know, today. If, Absolutely. Uh, if Will Davis wins, he will um, – he's already qualified for the Classic, so that would mm -hmm. extend the berth to the Elite Series. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, – and same thing for Josh Butler. He won at Logan Martin earlier this year. But mm – -hmm. uh, if uh, Bobby Bakewell wins, he punches his ticket to the Classic. So, mm -hmm. uh, a lot on the line. A lot on the line, and uh, and, uh, and then we'll uh, kind of shut it down for the for the off season and uh, regroup and uh, do it all again starting next year. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. And so, I also want to. Uh, I don't think people understand, you know, all the work that you you had to do to make sure that you guys were able right. to get this tournament going i know although you had the adjustment period or you know the period where i mean a week where you had to flip it from right. lake right. hartwell to lake mm -hmm. martin so i mean i know talking to you you talked to brett pritchard and you, yep. you guys were able to to quickly get things right. going i was just wondering if you could you know again t i know i already know the story but right. for everybody else oh, just yeah. tell the story no it's great you know uh we certainly you know want to keep the folks over in south carolina you know the ones affected by helene mm -hmm. uh, in our thoughts and prayers but you know that was the basis the genesis of why we moved obviously mm -hmm. you know and it wasn't necessarily that hartwell was torn up it was mm -hmm. more of um the supply chain was limited uh, i mean you've seen these guys there mm -hmm. in the community there i mean a, a bass boat takes 55 gallons of fuel and they'll yeah. burn through that in a day mm -hmm. right so if we put 200 boats times 55 times five you yeah. know we're gonna eat up a lot of fuel you know yeah. we're gonna eat up a lot of food and and uh and eat up a lot of hotel rooms and uh the community just didn't need that they didn't need um uh, you know, us coming in and taking away valuable resources that were needed by people who, mm. who have been affected. So that was uh, that was the genesis of it. And then you know we uh, we started looking and based but like what we talked about, Lake Martin was kind of one of the the closest lakes compared to Hartwell um, because we wanted to keep it consistent. And this was the Monday before official practice began. Mm. Offic official practice started that next Saturday. So we had to do something quickly. So uh, we picked up the phone, called Brett Pritchard. I've known Brett for years. He turned around and called uh, Scott Hardy, uh, uh, a council uh, person, mm. a councilman on uh, in uh, Alex City, who turned around and got a hold of Sandra Fuller and Mayor what Mayor uh, Woody Baird. And, uh, and we got the ball rolling. And mm -hmm. by that afternoon, we were... We were flipped, announced, and, uh, and and ready to go. You know, it was a very, it was one of those things. We we got it locked, but then we had to figure out the other details. But I, me being from originally from Wetumpka, I was very mm -hmm. familiar with the place, so knew what we could do, how we had to set up, and all that stuff. So uh, you know, that was one thing that that helped us with those logistics. But uh, yeah, I mean, huge shout out to them. Can't thank them enough for committing to us very very quickly. You know, and and. Uh, not something they necessarily have budgeted, planned, mm. or any of that, but um, it, it's all worked out well. And I mean, Cali is beautiful, beautiful again today. It's yes. fantastic. I was so. just about to say, I mean, we had the unfortunate circumstances on Friday where the iPad overheated, and I was, <laughs> I was so surprised because it was yeah. like a good mid 70 right, day, and right. I was like, this is coming out of nowhere. Right. But I mean, you brought it up, you know. I, I, because I am just like so curious. I love mm -hmm. learning about all this, everything fishing that I have, you know, so far. Kind of, I guess, tell me what some of the what some of the anglers are taking into account, you know, especially you know, getting adjusted to Lake Martin. Right. How what the factor of weather plays into mm -hmm. it. I, I remember when I talked to Mr. Compton on uh, yep. GL Compton yep. on uh, on Friday. He told me that you know the wooden docks played a difference. Right, you right. know, uh, just tell me what you know the anglers are taking into account to to get some success. <laughs> yeah. going. I mean, they're just so good. I mean, honestly, I don't. I'm not good enough to be able to answer that question. They they can they can pattern and understand what high pressure does, what falling water does. You know, Lake Martin again. It was, I think, almost full pool, which is unusual this time of year. But all mm -hmm. that rain we've had. Um, but you know how that affects the fishing. You know, and their electronics is. It. I mean, they're just they're just really good at, mm -hmm. at figuring it out and and. Um, you know, it's, it's just impressive to watch them and what they do. No, I, absolutely. And, I mean, you mentioned it earlier as far as the, the nine anglers that were able to punch their yep. ticket. I was yep. just wondering if you could, you know, let us know who those nine anglers are and then especially right. also where, you know, people can find information sure, if they want yeah. to continue it's to watch. It's all on uh, Bassmaster.com. We've mm -hmm. got our angler of the year, Easton Fothergill, who is a, a graduated Montevallo University mm -hmm. angler. So uh, that, congratulations to him on a lot of that. He's going to end up winning over 200 grand wow. after it's all said and done from this year. 
Um, second place, Cody Meyer, who's in the top ten. Mm-hmm. Um, here, let me see if I can pull it up. I was about to say, pull it all up. We've got um, six right I now. I know most of them from memory, but I will probably uh, miss For, a forget few. a name. Yeah, that, it always right. seems to happen. Yeah. Uh, but I guess another thing I wanted to ask you was uh, I noticed it on uh, Friday just the the Japanese fishermen that were yep, that were a lot. yeah That's right. I, I was about to say is that That's right. is, I mean for the most part I, whenever I talked to to Gio Compton he let me know that a lot of these fishers were fishermen were from you know right. similar areas I guess kind of I, I just find it very interesting uh, as far as you know getting. You know, people from out of the country. Yeah, know, I mean, involved. usually it's 36 states. That's what we average. Mm-hmm. Four foreign countries. You know, we have anglers from Canada. Evan Kong's another angler who mm-hmm. punched their ticket, punched his ticket to the uh, to the Elite Series. Um, you know, Mexico. We've had people from Italy and mm-hmm. South Africa and Zimbabwe and, and you know those sorts of places. But yeah, I mean, uh, the folks who got in. I'm looking right now. Easton Father, you know, Cody Meyer, Tucker Smith, former Auburn angler. Yes. He's a three-time high school national champion. Champion, college national champion, uh, college team of the year, which is like angler of the year, yeah. but for college. So a uh, very, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, a lot of uh, accolades to his name and an Auburn angler. So I know you're, the folks watching online <laughs> yeah. can relate to that. <laughs> um, Paul Marks, he's from Georgia. Mill Wagner, also from Georgia. Mill Fish for Ole Miss. Mm. Um, give you guys a kind of an a lay of the land there. Andrew Loberg, sixth place. He's a former Chico State angler. That's mm. all the way out in California. Now he lives in Grand Alabama, but mm. uh, he is originally from California. Dakota Ebear, who's inside the uh, top ten today fishing yes. uh, from Texas, mm. uh, fish for Tarleton State. Um, again, a great angler. Uh, Bo Browning, who made a big move uh, yesterday, is actually Easton's roommate. Bo's from Arkansas, oh, okay. but he goes to Montevallo as well. Oh, so gotcha. uh, they probably have fished here a, a few times. And then uh, top nine, uh, Evan Kong from Canada. So uh, and just missing it, fishing his heart out, Matt Adams. And he uh, he's from Oxford, Alabama, so another Alabama. Kid, so. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. So. But, I mean... I think we have to. It, it's the last day. It's day three. I also don't got to got to take it. Nah, no, we're good. We're good. I got gotcha. you. So. <laughs> but so yeah. it, it's the it's the final day. Yeah. Uh, just kind of want to know right. what you expect from you know this last day and, and what you expect to see before I, I'll let you go. You know, got the, some, got some big fish. Uh, Bobby Bakewell caught a big one on a buzz bait yeah. earlier this morning. That was awesome. Yeah. So. He's making a move, looking like he may win the tournament. But you know, I don't know. Josh Butler maybe too. So it's it's hard to say. But it's uh, it's going to come down to the wire. If you're local, come out. So we're going to be presenting our elite series uh, qualifiers with uh, with trophies. We're going to give away $110,000 just to the elite series angler of the year um, today. So it's going to be awesome. But yeah, man, we got to go get ready and uh, follow along on Bassmaster.com. Yeah. Should be awesome. And, uh, again, just huge shout out to Alex City. Um, yeah, awesome place to call home. Love it here. Uh, I, not my home, but I love coming here, uh, and uh, we I live in Vestavia. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's fun, and uh, love Lake Martin, and uh, I'm sure we'll be back. And just can't thank uh, Sandra, Mayor Woody, and all the folks. Uh, you know, they've done a great job. So have you, Samuel. I appreciate it. Man. Absolutely. Yep. Well, I appreciate awesome, it. Thank, appreciate you, thank it. you for yep. hopping on. My name has been Samuel Higgs. I'm the sports editor for the Alexander City Outlook, and I'm here at Wind Creek State Park. So if you guys catch yourself with some free time, come out here. Thank you, guys. Bye. This has been the sports edition of TPI The Podcast, a production of TPI Media.